Okay, so now we have the quadrants combined into single schemes, and we're starting off with Sarah Owens. And we're going to use our, our typical process here of, of uh, critiquing the work using optimisms, cautions, and next steps. That's consistent with Charette methodology. And so starting off with optimisms, one of the first things that I was noticing was this idea of a treatment center, <clears throat> which makes more formal the sustainability aspects of the project and can use them both as a celebration of what the school's about and also use them functionally for cost reduction and environmental um, improvement. The kitchen courtyard seems to be um, optimistic about that. One, because it features the kitchen as an object that students can go to and have an experience in. and then the idea of the um, gardens out here for growing food. Um, based on what I see at Miqua now, that would be a pretty strong idea and a way to activate that courtyard. And so I have a lot of optimisms about that. I think the two-story scheme, now that we're seeing how much space is taken up with the um, parking and the bus drop-off, I think the two-story scheme maybe has a lot of merit in terms of reducing the amount of buildings on the site um, in order to allow for more play space. <clears throat> Certainly optimistic, although I don't have it here in the text, about the series of courtyards that can create opportunities for outdoor play and interaction. Uh, I'll be coming back to this when I come back to the next steps. <clears throat> Some of the cautions um, that I'm, I can, I'm a little concerned about is the entry sequence from the community, meaning that if I was walking here, and maybe it's not such a big deal, but if I was gonna walk to the entry, I'd have to do that and kind of coming through the parking lot. Um, maybe not the most ideal way to approach the building. I suppose though, that the majority of people are gonna park and then walk into the building this way. So perhaps that maybe is not such a caution. Um, <clears throat> Let's just keep going forward. Shape orientation of the building. So one of the things that we want to try to do is get the buildings to be a little bit more rectangular in shape facing south. So maybe two classrooms like that. Um, this one's already kind of got a very narrow shape. This one could even have a more narrow shape. And so, and even maybe, I don't know about those, but even these could get a little thinner and longer. And what that's going to allow you to do is get daylight deeper into these spaces. Um, towards the back of the room and have a more efficient and more daylight building. Um, <clears throat> and so that's that one. Vertical circulation, that's really more of a next step. Obviously, if we're going to have a second floor, there's going to be some sort of vertical circulation that occurs um, at, the, at the edges of this. And that will be a pretty important part of the scheme because that's also a place for views and other opportunities. Um, as is typically the case, you go from a very rich concept with lots of overlap, and then as you try to make the concept more real, you lose a lot, not a lot, you've lost some of the magic of your original sketches, which is common in the studio project. And, and usually we'll spend, I don't know, eight more weeks trying to regain that in a typical studio. In this particular case with this studio, we're not gonna spend too much tr time trying to regain all of the magic. Although I think another pass at this scheme and getting some more of the overlaps. Um, and when I do next steps, I'm gonna show some examples of how we might be able to do that. Uh, another caution, I don't know if it's a, a deal breaker, but having the kindergarten playground right on that busy corner, it seems to me that perhaps kindergartens, ooh, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna be the most optimistic place. Um, certainly if you rework the scheme, having kindergarten play here um, and maybe maybe this becomes the kindergarten over here and these offices maybe I don't know That's the problem is once we start breaking apart the scheme um, things get moved around and it gets kind of weird But that was a that was a caution that I had now as much as I like the treatment area Which is right located right here one and that's sort of I'm assuming also the mechanical one of the things is you want to try to have that in the middle of the building near wherever the bathrooms are going to be so that if you're collecting and treating water and you want to get that out. Or if it's a mechanical room, you want to get the mechanical systems out from the center to minimize the energy needed to push air or water. However, if you were to um, <clears throat> put some public bathrooms, I don't know, maybe in here somewhere, so that all of the water is going to be collected down at this end, it would be easy to um, feed that clean or relatively clean gray water into the bathrooms. Another thing I'm a little worried about is the acoustics noise. Um, this side, this part of Kelly Drive, this is Kelly Drive here. Sorry for my writing. 
uh, is very loud. So I'm thinking we might need to have a, a nice eight or 10 foot wall here. I hate to say it um, because it gets very loud and it'll still be pretty loud. The other thing, um, I'm very optimistic about the number of trees. I'd like to see the trees used more as space makers along the edge of, um, along the edge of, whoops, sorry about that. Um, along the edge of the spaces to create. So if I do trees, I like to see them sort of framing space and creating space that then creates open spaces that people can congregate in. So maybe, for example, you know, these start to do this and that creates a space that kids can play. Um, although I'm gonna talk a minute about water collection and how that might work. Um, but I do see the beginnings of an idea of how these things begin to interact, which I'm going to go through into the next slide. So some of the next steps ideas that we want to talk about here or that I want to mention here um, is one is the idea of the water and how that water can be used, um, not just functionally, but as a, um, <clears throat> as a way to reinforce the wandering. So if this is the high point of the site and water is somehow finding its way through this project and it ends sort of down here, I wonder if you couldn't create a wetland there that was also a way to um, collect water and, uh, and bring it back into the building for uh, processing back into your center here, into your mechanical room here. And maybe there's a bunch of trees down here that help to frame that as now a place to have your biophilic experience here where the kids can find their way, which would mean that, I mean, one of the things we could do is we can build walls, but one of, one of the things I was thinking of is, I'll come back to shape orientation in a minute, but I started to imagine this treatment center that you have here, which is, I think, um, as I already mentioned, was some, some, some sort of strong idea, um, to think about a long, thin treatment center that also acts as a wall, and it could be an L-shaped building, that has, um, you know, maybe there's a living machine down here or a way to treat grade water. It obviously would have to be pumped back up to here, <clears throat> but this could be glass um, and it could be open so, and it could be open on this side too at certain points so that this public can get a view. And, <clears throat> and then I also thought that that could be a way to um, get your PV panels sort of located on top of that. And so, yes, it's a beacon, but it's a beacon in a different sense. And whatever that wall material is for that treatment center could continue. And this could be sort of an arcade idea. So they're starting to build sort of a wall that lets views in, but generally blocks noise. And then this space right here, you know, this element here could become the higher part of the auditorium. I don't know. And then I don't know what happens over here. Um, but just sort of looking at, so one, looking at how water can reinforce pathways. Um, and so as you move through the site, you begin to experience water. And two, thinking about this treatment center down here. Um, coming back to the shape orientation, I think I already drew this when I was talking about cautions. Um, just looking at opportunities to get these spaces. Even the gym may want, I don't know about a gym because gyms don't need, I don't know if it makes sense to orient a gym this way. Um, it, may, it may not matter, it may be this is the optimal location. Uh, I'm interested in how I get from the lobby. I'd like to be able to see from the lobby into this space. This is one of your signature spaces. I mean, the lobby looks pretty good. You've got a view that way. You've got a view that way. And if we do it right, you can have a view looking down this, this water course. Now, of course, water um, doesn't have to be a continuous flow. It can always be a series of water elements that happen along the way that students can experience in different ways. So these could be, in this case, it could be some sort of cistern collection that waters these crops, but in other cases, it could be some sort of play area. And then of course, down here, we talked about it being uh, more of a biophilic element, a more naturalistic element that would um, allow that to occur. So um, having said all that, I'm sure there's a lot more that I would say. I know that we're gonna meet at noon today, but I wanted to get this to you as soon as I could. And um, and we can go from there. Okay, great. Thank you.